come on, come on. We got no secrets here. I need some money. What do you mean you need money? I thought I gave you some in Detroit. That was Detroit. All the time he needs money. Well, what do you do with it? I steal it. I go through your pockets every night to see if there's any left to send your old lady. Get the reservations. John Garfield, iconic star of the 1940s. His signature performances were driven by sex and money and the trouble they can cause. That includes two of his best-known movies. The Postman Always Rings Twice from 1946, opposite Lana Turner. And the boxing drama Body and Soul from 1947. A clear influence on Scorsese's Raging Bull. Garfield, the son of immigrant parents, grew up poor in a succession of rough New York neighborhoods. Working class and immigrant moviegoers of the time formed a strong identification with him. And the moral conflicts his characters struggled with, especially in crime melodramas, were heightened versions of viewers' own conflicts over moral choices. Garfield was the first full-fledged movie star to have been trained as a method actor. In New York, his training as an actor included lessons at the American Laboratory Theater and his work with the legendary Group Theater, both of which were using the ideas of Konstantin Stanislavski especially the technique of affective memory, which allowed actors to draw from their own life histories in order to more fully live a character's experience. According to historian Isaac Butler, Garfield pioneered a new naturalistic approach to acting for the camera, one rooted in the same techniques that would soon be called the method. As a naturalistic actor, Garfield looked for multiple unique facets of his characters. But Warner Brothers found it more profitable to typecast him as a New York tough guy. After his movie debut in 1938, Garfield was signed to a seven-year contract that limited the roles he would be allowed to play. Warner's at the time was known best for their New York set crime dramas, featuring hard-bitten gangsters, such as Paul Muni's Scarface, Edward G. Robinson's Little Caesar, Humphrey Bogart's Duke Mantee, and James Cagney's Public Enemy. Warner's vision was to develop Garfield into a kind of younger version of Jimmy Cagney. Hey, I suppose it's that swell dish you've been running around with, huh? Keep her out of this. All right, all right. Nothing to get excited about. I was... Shut up! Okay. Sorry. Over the next seven years, Garfield was constantly going on strike for better scripts and for roles that didn't typecast him as, in his words, disillusioned misanthropes. At the same time, Warner's capitalized on Garfield's inordinate sexual charisma. He brought a sexual heat to his roles that Cagney and the other Warner's tough guys never could. So the stories featuring Garfield's tough guys often included romantic subplots. And to lend allure, Warner's began teaming Garfield with their new top cameraman, James Wong Howe, whom Jack Warner had hired after seeing how glamorous he'd made Hedy Lamar. His real name was Jacob Julius Garfinkel. And according to film critic Jay Hoberman, even though the studio changed his name, Garfield received extensive coverage in the Jewish press. Jewish audiences recognized Garfield as their first Hollywood leading man. He was seen as an embodiment of Jewish pride, most explicitly in the supporting role of Dave Goldman, a Jewish army veteran in Kazan's expose of anti-Semitism in post-war America gentleman's agreement. What's your name, bud? Dave. Dave Goldman. What's yours? No, I mind what my name is. I told you I don't like officers. I especially don't like them if they're yids. <laughs> Sorry, sir. He's terrible when he gets all tanked up. Sorry. What's the matter with you anyway? Come on, leave him alone. Let's take a walk. Dave Goldman was just one of several World War II servicemen that Garfield played during and after the war. He had tried to enlist at the start of the war, but was denied due to his weak heart. In order to contribute what he could to the war effort, 
He performed in USO shows and spent time with soldiers overseas to lift morale, traveling to battle zones in North Africa and Southern Italy. Back in Los Angeles, he teamed with Betty Davis to found the Hollywood Canteen, a place for allied soldiers of all races to be fed and entertained by Hollywood stars, including himself, for free. In his films, Garfield worked more closely than any star of the period with black and Asian artists. When Garfield co-founded an independent production company, the Enterprise Studios, he immediately cast African-American actor Canada Lee as his rival and eventual trainer in Body and Soul. It always felt so good after a win. Walk down Lenox Avenue, kids all crazy for you and proud. For the same movie, he specifically asked for Chinese-born cinematographer James Wong Hao, a close collaborator from Warner Brothers, who would go on to photograph Garfield's final film, He Ran All the Way. When he returned briefly to Warner Brothers, Garfield and director Michael Curtiz cast the Afro-Puerto Rican actor Juano Hernandez as the best friend of Garfield's character, a rarity in 1950 Hollywood. Howard Gelman states that John Garfield was the best known and probably the most successful actor to be totally blacklisted in the industry. Many of Garfield's friends and colleagues from the New York theater had been radicalized following the crash of Wall Street and the rise of fascism in Europe. In the mid-1930s, many of them joined the Communist Party, including his wife, Robbie. Garfield didn't join the party, though he was sympathetic to leftist causes. The House Un-American Activities Committee members knew all this when Garfield testified before them in 1951 as a friendly witness. The committee's goal was to get Garfield to name names of party members and of possible sympathizers. Garfield's goal was to avoid naming any names of anyone at all, whether of friends, enemies, or even of those named already. Garfield succeeded, but as a result, he never made another movie. He died 13 months later of a heart attack at the age of 39.